Hi guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. So I have quite the book haul to share with you today. Um, over the last few weeks, I have gone to two different library book sales and I also went to a half price books clearance event. So between all of that and one short trip to the thrift store, I have accumulated a lot of books. Um, an obscene amount of books. I'm going to venture to say there's over a hundred books here. Um, keeping in mind that that also includes books for my children, which I will share with you. I like to share with you some of the books that I pick up for my kids as well, so that you kind of see what I'm picking up. But let's get into this because I have a feeling this might be a long one. All right, so the first group that I want to share with you is what I picked up from the thrift store. Um, this is a rather small haul. Uh, I think there's like maybe six or seven books here. Um, most of them kids books. So I was able to find a brand new copy of The Sandwich Swap by Kelly DiPuccio, I think is what it is. Um, but this is about two little girls who both of them have different lunches, things that the other one is very unfamiliar with, and then they end up forming a friendship and swapping lunches and um, all about accepting people that are different than you. I also picked up LMNOPs, um, and that is by Keith Baker, and this is a fairly well-known ABC's sort of picture book um, with a bunch of illustrated little peas in it. So that one is fun. I grabbed Nellie New and Daddy Too. Um, this is by Anna Dudney, I think is how you pronounce it, but the same author of the Llama Llama books. So I grabbed that one. I got The Little Mouse, The Red Ripe Strawberry, and The Hungry Bear by Dawn and Audrey Wood. Um, this is one that I'm familiar with. My um, oldest daughter had it, or we got it from the library, I think. But it's about a little mouse and a big strawberry and a big hungry bear and we love that book and then i also found a copy of the pigeon wants a puppy by mo willems um and this is just one of the books in the don't let the pigeon drive the bus series um i also found a copy of the light in the attic by shell silverstein this is his second collection of poems um i have where the sidewalk ends and the missing piece and the giving tree um, but I did not have a light in the attic, so I grabbed that one. Um, and then I picked up uh, by Lori Halls Anderson, Chains. This is a historical fiction, I believe. I'm guessing it has to do with slavery. I, honest to goodness, have no idea, and there is no summary on the back. So I have no idea. I'm guessing because of the cover, it has to do with slavery. Um, but I know Lori Halls Anderson is a fantastic author, so I grabbed that. And then I also, this was a cover buy for me. Um, it's What the Night Sings by Vesper Stamper. And since I've purchased it, I have heard that it is phenomenal. Um, it does have some illustrations in it. I'm pretty sure that this is a World War II historical fiction. Um, and I also think it's YA, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But I do know that this has won some awards and is supposed to be very good. I didn't know that. It was a cover buy for me. So good for me. That was the first trip I made was to the thrift store. The second trip I made was to my, the library that's closest to me, their library book sale. And I didn't find a whole lot there, but I did find a few things. The first of which is books one and two in the Warrior Cats series, the series Power of Three. So this is The Sight and Dark River. Um, my kids, if you have not seen the book club that I started with my kids, we're reading a Warrior's Cat book and they are obsessed with the Warrior Cat series now and they didn't have these ones and so I think these were like 50 cents a piece. So that was an easy buy for me. Um, and then I also picked up a copy of The Red Tent by Anita Diamant. This is one that I've read, gave five stars to, absolutely loved, and apparently lost my copy of. So I nabbed this one. I think at this sale it was hardcovers were $2, paperbacks were $1, children's books were $0.50, cents, I believe. 
but um so this was like a dollar and it's in brand new condition and i just wanted to have it for my shelves um i also picked up the martian by andy weir this is another one that is in brand new condition have not read this yet super hyped book it's a um sci-fi everybody that i know that has read it has loved it um except maybe one person but you know um so i really really want to read this so i grabbed that um, I also picked up Lorna Landvik's book, um, Angry Housewives Eating Bonbons. Um, this is one that a friend in my community has uh, or had recommended to me. And I'm not real sure what it's about. I think it's a comedy kind of contemporary. Um, but yeah, I'm not real sure. But she recommended it and it was a dollar. So I picked it up. I also grabbed There There by Tommy Orange. This is a book that I added to my TBR um, this past month and I saw this there and it's beautiful and it's in brand new condition and I believe this is a Native American um, book about Native Americans and how they are living today um, some of the challenges that they're facing today um, I also grabbed the smell of other people's houses by Bonnie Sue Hitchcock um, this is one that I know Lindsay from Lindsay's little library had read within the past year, I think. And she really liked this and it's fairly short. Um, and I know that I really, it sounded really intriguing to me. I'm not a hundred percent sure what it's about. I think it's set in Alaska. Um, but yeah, it's in brand new shape and it's a hardback. So, and then I also grabbed the orphan's tale by Pam Jenoff. And this is, I believe set in world war II. Yeah. And it has to do with a traveling circus. And I think somebody, okay, so 16-year-old Noah has been cast out in disgrace after becoming pregnant by a Nazi soldier. And so I think her and her baby join a traveling circus. So that sounded right up my alley. That's what I got at that library sale. So then I went to the Half Price Books clearance event. Um, I live outside of the Twin Cities and they hold this, I believe, every year at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. And so I went to this not realizing what I was walking into. I was very unprepared. So I did take a really quick clip of what the place looked like when I walked in. It was insane. Um, but I was very overwhelmed. But I did manage to peruse through the books and find some really fun things that I'm very excited about. Um, so with this, I think I'm going to start with kids books and work my way up to adult books. Um, as far as kids books go, board books for my son, I picked up, I guess how much I love you, which is a kind of like a classic, a modern classic, I guess at this point, most people know what that one's about. Um, Duck and Goose Find a Pumpkin, which I thought would be fun for this fall and Silly Susie Goose. Um, and I'm not real sure what this one's about. Oh, it has different like animals in it. And if I were a giraffe, I could stretch up high. And uh, this time the lion did notice and he didn't like it at all. And so there's like a lion. But anyway, he loves animals. So I got those ones for him. And then for my five-year-old, we still read her picture books quite often. So I picked up Magic Box by Katie Clemenson. And Wise Up Silly Owl by Steve Metzger. And I also grabbed her Cha-Cha Chimps by Julia Durango. And Cha-Cha Chimps is one that I love reading out loud to my kids. We've gotten this one from the library multiple times. And it's just a fun counting book that I like reading out loud to the kids. So those were the kids' books that I got at the Half Price Books clearance event. It was hardcover books were $2, paperbacks were $1, and then... Children's books, I think it was hardcover was a dollar and paperbacks were 50 cents. So, um, and I don't know what they charge me for the board books and that kind of stuff, but whatever. Um, so getting into middle grade books, um, I did find Anne's House of Dreams by Ellen Montgomery. I'm trying to kind of collect an entire thrifted um, Anne of Green Gables collection and I did not have this one yet. Um, so that's that. I also picked up this older version of Winnie the Pooh. It is a paperback um, and it's just the Winnie the Pooh stories. And I loved this edition with the little Pooh Bear on it. 
but I thought this was so cute and it was 50 cents. So I grabbed this and I thought I could maybe even read this out loud to my five-year-old. I think she would really like that. Um, I picked up this nice hardcover edition of the Castle Corona by Sharon Creech. Um, Sharon Creech is an author that I really enjoy um, as far as middle grade goes. And I think this one, yeah, this one has some illustrations in it and stuff. And it's just very medieval. So um, I have not read this one yet, but it's going on my middle grade to be read. Um, I also found this almost brand new copy of The Dreamer by Pam Munoz Ryan. I read The Dreamer during middle grade March this year and I loved this book. This is based off of the true story of um, Pablo Neruda, who is an Argentinian, I think, poet. Um, but yeah, so this was based off of his childhood and it is just a beautiful, beautiful story and it has um, illustrations in it as well that are just gorgeous and I loved this book. I actually listened to the audiobook and loved it, but I wanted to get a copy because this is beautiful and it's going to add to my Pam Munoz Ryan collection very well. Um, I also picked up a copy of the Sisters Grimm book one. This is a fairy tale retelling kind of um, middle grade series and it is about Sabrina and Daphne Grimm who's who are descendants of the fairy tale characters or the Grimm brothers one or the other. I don't know. I've read a few of these um, many years ago and I really really enjoyed them and honestly I'd love my kids to read them so I grabbed the first one because it was like a dollar and then I have two cover buys which I really don't know what they're about so I have Incredible Magic of the Incredible Magic of Bean by Katherine Erskine and I don't know what this is about but I really like the cover of it so woo can I get it without the glare there we go um so yeah I don't know and then I got The Mighty Miss Malone by Christopher Paul Curtis. And this is about a family, 12-year-old Deza Malone, but the, it's set in Gary, Indiana. Um, I'm originally from Indiana, and my husband was born right outside of Gary, Indiana. So that's pretty much why I bought this book, is because I was familiar with the area in which it was set. And yeah, we'll see if it's any good, though. These are going on to my... Um, middle grade shelf as well. Those are the middle grades from that one. And then we get into YA. Um, so I only picked up three YA books. I got Emmy and Oliver by Robin Fenway. And this is about two teens. The boy was kidnapped by his father when he was younger and is now returning home to live with his mother again. They found him and it is about him and his best friend as a child and kind of their reconnection I guess I think um so and this is brand new hardcover the next one I picked up was a complete cover by and that is a thousand nights by E.K. Johnston Johnston sorry um but look at that cover like seriously and even inside the um dust jacket it's just so pretty it's so pretty and it is brand new um, but I think this is a retelling of, is it a thousand? I forget what it is. Um, but yeah, it's a retelling of that. Oh, well, I'll put it down here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so I think that's a, that's what this is. I honestly have no idea. I just bought it to put on my shelf because it looked beautiful and it was a dollar because it was, uh, with the kids books. Um, and then I also picked up a code named Verity. Um, this is by Elizabeth Ween, and this is a World War II historical fiction about a female pilot, I believe. Um, and I think her plane goes down in France. She's British. Her plane goes down in France, maybe, I think. Um, I know that it has to do with a female pilot in World War II. Um, but it's one I've heard a lot about and been, I've been wanting to pick up for a while and just haven't gotten around to yet. So those are the YA ones that I got. And then the adult books. So the first one I grabbed, I'm going to have to get these stickers off because there's a lot of them, but it's Skipping Christmas by John Grisham. Um, this is the book that the movie, what's the movie called? With Tim Allen in it. 
I can't even remember now. Oh my goodness. I'll put it down here too. But um, it's what that movie is based on. Oh my goodness. My brain is not working today. Um, but anyway, it's a Christmas book and it's really short. And I know that Lindsay, once again, from Lindsay's Little Library has um, said that she would like to reread this, which means she liked it. Um, and I've been wanting to pick it up for a while. So I just went ahead and grabbed it because now I have it. I also grabbed The House at Tinniford by Natasha Solomons. Um, this sounds a lot like Downton Abbey. So it's 1938. Um, this 19-year-old is a Jew and she moves from Vienna to England and she becomes a maid, I believe. Um, and she works downstairs and she forms a relationship with somebody who lives upstairs. And so it's kind of like a downstairs upstairs relationship set on the brink of the war. So that sounded really good. Very Downton Abbey vibes from that. Um, I also grabbed The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. I've never read this book. And it's one that a lot of people talk about. I'm not 100% sure what it's about. I know it's set in the 60s. And I'm pretty sure it has to do with race relations. Um, so yeah, grab that. I also grabbed The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfeld. Um, this is one that was added to my TBR earlier this year. It's in one of my growing TBR videos. Um, not 100% sure what it's about, but I know a lot of people have said that this is their favorite book of all time. You'll notice a um, common thread with this. I don't know what a lot of these books are about. Yeah. Next one, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is a very, very hyped book, even amongst people that aren't in the booktube community. Um, I have heard wonderful, wonderful things about this. I'm pretty sure it is like futuristic and has to do with a traveling circus or music group or traveling entertainers of some sort. We'll see. That's one that has, I have been on the top of my TBR for a while, so I'm really glad that I was able to find that. I also went ahead and picked up Julie and Julia, My Year of Cooking Dangerously by Julie Powell. This is the book that the movie is based off of. I've seen the movie before. I really enjoyed it. Hey, it has a bookmark in it. What do you know? I love when I buy books used, and then they have bookmarks in them. Oh, it's a chakra. It has all the chakra stuff on it. Anyway, um, yeah. So, and this is about somebody who decides to um, cook out of Julia Child's cookbook for a year and teach herself the art of French cooking. Um, and then I also picked up the Book of Lost Things. Um, this is by John Connolly, and I think that this is a book about books. I know that there was a big group of people that read this last year, and honestly, I looked it up and saw the cover and said, oh yeah, I like that one. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what it's about, but I think it's a book about books. Um, and it looks like it's in the point of view of a 12 year old, maybe. So I don't even know. We'll see. All right. And then I got What She Left Behind by Ellen Marie Wiseman. Um, this I also think might be World War II historical fiction. Maybe not. Nope. It is not. Um, it's set in 1929 though. And yeah. I know a lot of people have read this though and really liked it. Honestly, a lot of these, I don't know what they're about, but I will say they're all ones that are on my Goodreads TBR already. And so at one point I did know what they were about and I added them to my Goodreads TBR for a reason. I just need to reinvestigate some of them. Next is Diane Chamberlain's um, The Secret Life of Cece Wilkes. Um, I read Necessary Lies by Diane Chamberlain last year and loved that book so so much um and i've been meaning to pick up some more diane chamberlain since then this one is in brand new shape and so this one is set in 1977 or in 1977 um genevieve russell disappears and then 20 years later her remains are discovered and timothy gleason is charged with murder but there's no sign of the unborn child um, and then it says Cece Wilkes knows how Genevieve Russell died because she was there and she also knows what happened to the missing infant because two decades ago she made the devastating choice to raise the baby as her own. Now Timothy Gleason is facing the death penalty and she has another choice to make. Tell the truth and destroy her family or let an innocent man die in order to protect a lifetime of lies. 
we'll see. And then I also grabbed Those Who Save Us by Jenna Bloom. Um, this is a World War II memoir, I think. Um, I don't know if this is historical fiction or not. Um, this is about a lady who survived World War II in Germany as a Jew and then leaves Germany and comes to the United States and lives in Minnesota. Um, and then, like, 50 years later, her daughter's trying to figure out whatever happened in Germany and why she ended up coming to the States. Um, I don't know, but it sounded really interesting to me. Those were all the books that I got from the Half Price book sale. I'm telling you, I'm going to count these when I get done and tell you how many books there are because there's a ton. Now, on to the library book sale that I went to today, which was phenomenal. Like, I don't know if I've ever been to a library book sale that was this great, especially for middle grade books. All right, so starting with board books, I grabbed um, Curious George, Are You Curious? My son really loves these books, and so I thought that this would be a really good one for him. Um, I also grabbed a copy of Blue Hat, Green Hat by Sandra Boynton. So we already actually own this book, but it is very beat up, and he, this is one of his absolute favorites. Um, and it is a uh, book about like colors and how to wear clothes, and so it's cute. We really like it. And then we also picked up Please Mr. Panda by Steve Antony. This is a whole Mr. Panda series, and this one is about him giving everybody a donut and sharing his donuts. And let's see what else do we get. We got I'm Not Reading by Jonathan Allen, um, and it is a book about a bird and her chicks and her reading to them. Um, oh, and then this one I was very excited about. Um, so this is Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? It is part of the like Brown Bear, Brown Bear series by um, Bill Martin and Eric, Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carl. However, this one has braille on it. So you can't see it, but across it, it's taped onto it, the braille. And so every single page has that, you can kind of see it there, um, right there. It has the braille on it and so I thought that that was awesome these at this sale so I didn't say this at this sale kids books were 25 cents for paperbacks 50 cents for hardbacks adult books were um, five for a dollar no five for two dollars for paperbacks or 50 cents a piece and then a dollar for hardbacks yeah that's right um, so yeah, for like 50 cents. I thought this was so cool. And it's beat up a little bit right here, but I was very excited to have that. Um, I then also grabbed Harold and the Purple Crayon and Bad Kitty Does Not Light Dogs for just picture books to read to the kids. Um, let's see what else do we got. Um, I got While the World is Sleeping by Pamela Duncan Edwards, and this is just about animals um, that are nocturnal and what they do while everybody else is sleeping. Um, my kids are super into animals, so that was a good pick for that. Um, I also got Letter Town, and I don't know who this is by. Let's see. Uh, somebody Feral. I think it's missing the dust jacket, but that's okay. So there's a whole slew of words that start, but it's just a whole town that's made up of letters. So I thought that would be good. Um, okay, and then Narwhal, Unicorn of the Sea. These are by Ben Clanton, and this is a whole series that's just about Narwhal. And let's see, Lulu Walks the Dog by Judith Vorst. Um, I love the size of these. I think these are so cool. Lulu is a whole series, but... Um, it's like early chapter books, um, and I thought this would be good to read out loud to my five-year-old. We also got Minecraft Medieval Fortress. So my kids are into Minecraft, and this just teaches them how to build an entire medieval fortress, so grab that. I spent $15 at this book sale today, and I got two bags completely full of books. It's ridiculous. So we'll just let you know that in advance. I did not spend a lot of money, but I got a ton ton of stuff I'm very excited about. Um, okay, so I also got Artemis Fowl. I mentioned in my series that I want to read but I haven't read yet that I want to read Artemis Fowl. So I was able to find Artemis Fowl 
um, the Arctic Incident, the Eternity Code, and the Opal Deception. I don't know what order these are in. I don't know which ones I still need, but they're all the same covers, and they were cheap. So I got them. Um, I also had a viewer recommend to the kids and I for our next um, book club pick that we might enjoy the Kingdom Keeper series. This is kind of like a Disney after dark. It's about vil the Disney villains trying to take over the Disney parks and these kids go into the Disney parks after dark. And so I was able to find the paperback of the first one and then a hardcover copy of the second one and the third one. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed them because... Why not? So I have those for the kids if that piques their interest and they do want to do that. And then I got a ton of middle grade. So I know those were middle grade too. I got a lot of middle grade books in this. So I mentioned that my kids are really into the Warrior Cats books. So I did find some for them. I got a couple super editions. So I was able to find Firestar's Quest and this is brand brand spanking new and it's really pretty I really like that one so and 50 cents you guys these were 50 cents for hardcovers a quarter for paperbacks for kids books 25 cents for this one so the warrior super edition yellow fangs secret um I also picked up let's see what's this one it's just a another omen of the stars Night Whispers. So I think it's book number three in the Omen of the Stars series. Um, and then I also got The Power of Three, the third one. So this is the last one of the other two that I gotten previously, um, Outcast. So now I have all three of those books. Um, and then Aaron Hunter, which is the author group that writes the Warriors books, also has a Seekers book that is about bears. And so I was able to find books five and six, no, four and five. So four and five of these. So we have The Last Wilderness, which has a brown bear on it. And we also have Fire in the Sky, which is a polar bear. So I got those for them too. All right. Bertman. Um, this one I had picked up during middle grade March and never got around to it. But it is about a 12-year-old 12, 12 and who is relocating and... She's moving to San Francisco, which is the home of her library, literary idol, Garrison Griswold, creator of the online sensation Book Scavenger, a game where books are hidden all over the country, and clues to find them are revealed through puzzles. Um, but Emily soon learns that Griswold has been attacked and is in a coma, and no one knows anything about the epic new game he has been poised to launch. Then Emily and her new friend James discover an odd book, which they come to believe is from Griswold and leads to a valuable prize. Um, so this is a, the first one in a series, um, but I think that would be fun. Um, then I got Out of the Woods by Lynn Gardner, and this is one about these kids that go to a festival, and they are rescued by their brand new and very beautiful stepmama, but they don't know that she's actually a wicked witch and she likes children baked in pies with extra gravy. It's a thrilling tale of magic, wild adventure with so many twisty turns, you'll be kept guessing right to the very end. So it's like a fairy tale, mis fairy tale mystery. Um, it sounded really fun. So I grabbed it because it was 50 cents. I also found another Brian Selznick book, Marvels. I'm hoping I can get this library cover off, plastic off. Um, so yeah, I've read Hugo Cabret and I've read um, Wonderstruck that are similar to these. But these Brian Selznick books are like illustrated throughout them and then paid like written. And so they're huge, but they don't take very long to read and they are typically really good. So I grabbed that. <sighs> Still going. And then I also got The Witches by Roald Dahl. I have a bunch of Roald Dahl books, but I don't think I had The Witches. So I grabbed that because it was a quarter. I also got The Supernaturalist Naturalist by Eowyn Colfer. It's the same author as the Artemis Fowl series. Um, and it was a quarter. And it's brand new. So I grabbed it. 
Um, I also was able to find Anne of Windy Poplars to add to my Anne of Green Gables collection. I got a paperback version of The Never Ending Story. So how many 80s, early 90s kids remember the movie The Never Ending Story? Um, I didn't know that there was a book. So now I own it because, you know, just because. All right, The Ability by M.M. Vaughn. This one sounds really interesting. Um, this kid finds out that he can enter other people's minds and he has to learn to use his new ability to make the world a safer place. Um, so that one just sounded really fun. I got Half Minute Horrors. Um, it's by Lemony Snicket, Neil Gaiman, James Patterson, and more. And it's How Scary Can 30 Seconds Be? Read the shortest, scariest stories ever created. So they're literally like a page long, um, just scary stories. And I thought this would be really fun to read this month um, for like Spookathon or something along those lines. Um, I was able to get an autographed signed copy of Raimi Nightingale by Kate DiCamillo. This is brand spanking new hardback version. There's the signed first signed copy of a book I have owned. I take that back. I have a couple nonfiction ones. Um, but anyway, this is a Kate DiCamillo book. Um, I don't know what it's about. And a lot of people have read it and really liked it. So, and I'm assuming it's about Raimi Nightingale. Um, I grabbed Who is Stan Lee. Um, this is, I'm going to add to our Who is What Was book collection that I have going. Um, but I thought Stan Lee would be fun. My kids are starting to kind of get more into the Marvel universe. And so I thought that would be fun. I also grabbed a brand new copy of The Boy That Harnessed the Wind um, by William Cam Kwamba and Brian Mueller. Um, this is one, it's a nonfiction based off of a true story. That means the same thing. Um, and it is about a boy in Africa who built a windmill to, I think, get water for it or electricity for his village. I'm not 100% sure. I grabbed a uh, little princess by Frances Hodgen Burnett. Um, this is another children's classic I've never read that I need to read. I got this super cool version of Peter Pan. I just really like that cover. And on the back, look at that. All children except one grow up. Do you believe? Um, so I've read Peter Pan um, back when I was in high school. I read it and I loved it. And so I just saw this and I just wanted it and it was a quarter. So I got it. Um, and then I have a daughter who is super into wolves. So I got her Julie's Wolf Pack and Summer of the Wolves, which are two um, library discarded books that are about wolves. So, and they have pictures of wolves, real wolves on the back. So I grabbed those specifically for her because I thought she would love them. And then I got five adult books and those are The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton. Um, I have The Lake House by Kate Morton, but I've heard a lot of people really love this one too. Um, I don't really know what it's about. The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. I know this was on the banned books list and a lot of people have really been raving about it. Um, and I believe it is about a Native American. So yeah, I don't really know, but it's brand new and I know it has gotten rave reviews and it was on the banned books list. So I just had to buy it. These is my words, um, The Diary of Sarah Agnes Prine, 1881 to 1901. Um, and it is by Nancy E. Turner. This is one that I heard about from Mandy from, can't remember her channel name, but um, she had mentioned this in books that she wants to reread or something along those lines. Um, but it is all diary entries, I think, of this girl that was living out in the Arizona territories during the time. So I grabbed that. I also picked up a copy of The Kitchen House by Kathleen Grissom. This is another one that I've already read, gave five stars to. I love this book so, so, so much. And I didn't have a copy of it yet for my own shelves. So I needed to remedy that because it was 50 cents. And then I also grabbed a Jasmine Ward book, um, Salvage the Bones. Um, Krista from Books and Jams and I are reading Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward this month. And I believe this is a companion maybe to that one. 
Um, so I went ahead and grabbed it. That's all of it. I'm going to count these really quick and let you know how many this is because it is a lot. It's 88 books. So I'm done buying books for a while, in case you were wondering. Um, yeah, we're going to try to hold out until the new year, I think. Um, my to-be-read shelves are sufficiently stocked, plus some. So anyway, this is a very, very long book haul. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, what is, have, if you've read any of these 88 books, I'm sure you've read at least one. I'd love to know your comment down below and, um, let me know which one you are most excited for me to read as well. And yeah, other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that I am able to, um, demonstrate a little bit more self-control in the coming few months. Other than that, I hope that you stick around and subscribe and until next time. See ya!